Grace and peace, my friends. It's Thursday, July 16th, and I would remind you, new every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are working for good in the world. My name is Kay Huggins, and I'm the parish associate at Second Presbyterian Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm glad you're joining our circle of prayer this morning. If you are new, I suggest you read the weekly welcome as it gives an outline of our format and tells you a little more about the scriptures selected week by week. As we spend this time together soaking in scripture and praying, we create an offering of prayer, carrying our petitions and praise across the day and into the night. This is liturgy, the people's work. It's a work of giving and receiving blessings, and I'm grateful you're sharing in it. Now let us begin with a prayer based on today's Psalm, Psalm number 97. Let us pray. O oh God, you clothe the sky with light and the ocean depths with darkness. You work your mighty wonders among us. Claim us for your purposes that we may be among those who see your glory and give you praise. Amen. Knowing the Psalms means knowing the psalmist. And this particular psalmist is an individual who knows God well. The firm theological foundations of ancient Israel are expressed in this psalm. First, that God and God alone is the creator of all. Second, that God prefers right living and judges all with equity. And finally, God delights when God's people are faithful. With such a firm confidence, this psalmist extols God as a just judge. Listen, Psalm number 97. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice, let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are around you. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Fire goes up before you, consuming your foes. Your lightning illumines the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before you, before the God of all the earth. The heavens proclaim your justice, and all the nations behold your glory. All idol worshippers are put to shame, who make their boasts in worthless idols. All gods bow down before you. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because your judgments, O God, for you, Lord, are above are most high above the earth you are raised far above all other gods you lord love those who hate evil you protect the lives of your faithful ones and deliver them from the grasp of the wicked light dawns for the just and joy for the upright in heart rejoice in the lord o you just and give thanks to God's holy name. The results of the psalmist's firm faith in God as creator, judge, and protector are expressed most beautifully in that pre-closing line, verse 11. Light dawns for the just and joy for the upright in heart. Oh, how I pray that might be true for you today. Now our gospel lesson is closing in on the last week of Jesus' time with his disciples. And in this particular passage, Matthew 26, verses 1 through 16, it's the almost the last evening. Jesus and his disciples are characteristically at the house of a leper, named Simon, who's obviously an outcast or was obviously an outcast. While there, an unnamed woman enters the house, breaks the seal on an alabaster jar of ointment 
likely her family's only supply for burial preparations, and anoints Jesus, seemingly before his death. That aroma will accompany Jesus throughout the next three days, but so will the anger of one disciple. Listen. Chapter 26, the first 16 verses. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas, and they conspired to arrest Jesus by stealth and to kill him. But they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. Now while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, and she poured it on his head as he sat at table. And when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? She has performed a good service for me. For you will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. By pouring this ointment on my body, she has prepared me for burial. Truly I tell you, Wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment on, Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. You know, Judas must have been one of those difficult students, the type that has an alternative playbook ready to consult at any moment. When a woman disrupts the banquet, Judas quickly calculates the, we the waste and mocks her in ignorance. Surely, this gift could do more if sold and given to the poor. But Jesus counters, she has blessed me when such a blessing is most needed. She understands my death is near and she should be remembered for what she has done. But Judas can't let go of it. In fact, in his playbook, the only way to save Jesus' name is to fill up the purse and be prepared to buy, brag, bribe, or just blast your way out. 30 shekels, a half year of wages, seems about the right amount. A deal is made. Jesus' death draws near. Even as all in his circle breathes in the aroma of the burial ointment, but who does the church really remember? An unnamed woman or Judas? But now it's time to say our prayers. Let us pray. Loving God, as the rising sun chases away the night, so you have scattered the powers of death in the rising of Jesus Christ, and you bring us all blessings in him. Especially, we thank you for the community of faith that is our church, for those with whom we work or share common concerns, for the beautiful diversity of your children and the many indications of your love at work in the world, and for those who work for reconciliation. Mighty God, with the dawn of your love, you reveal your victory over all that would destroy or harm, and you brighten the lives of all who need you. Especially, we pray for all families suffering from separation, people 
who are different from ourselves. For those isolated by sickness and sorrow, for the victims of violence and warfare. And today we pray for the church in the Pacific region. Loving God, our hearts are open to you and you know our prayers as they ascend before you. Our hope is secure in you. We praise and thank you for the abundance of grace that has allowed us to endure this pandemic in faith. We thank you for moments of joy and laughter, for unexpected kindness, and for the love that joins family and friends when distance and isolation separates. Hear our prayers, sort out the intentions, and further those in line with your coming realm. Today, O oh Lord, we lift up our elders, many who are facing health issues, especially Bob, Gil, Richard with a new diagnosis of bladder cancer, but also those for whom isolation and aging pose new difficulties. Lena, Joe and Priscilla, Adolph and Jesse. We remember Lynn's mom and Iris's mom, praying for health and peace for all. We pray for those whose health is shifting, for John, now mostly in a wheelchair, for Sam's brother, Javier, in Monterey, and for Francis' sister, Alou, in Hong Kong, each with end-stage cancer. For Esther B., who's not feeling well, and her son, Chris, facing new health issues. We pray for Debbie's dad and Joanne, both recovering from injuries and surgery. We give thanks for Rob's Uncle Steve's liver and kidney transplant and pray for his recovery. And we rejoice that baby Eli has finally gone home from the Nick human. We pray for, Forrest's, for Rick's son Forrest facing heart surgery, as well as Tom preparing for hip surgery. We pray for Joey C recovering from a concussion we pray for Harry and Jeannie's friend in Florida and Mickey's sister, also Amanda's mother, diagnosed with COVID-19. We pray for Don and Jane's friend, Michelle, and ask your strong blessing in her life. We pray for all the medical professionals, especially those who are close to our church. Carla, Nicole, Cassie, Sandra, Camilla, Feliz, Tilda, Emiko, Pat's daughter Toby together with her husband Boyd, Sandra's cousins Melinda and Marshall, bless and protect these beloved ones. As we look at the changes that have occurred and are yet to occur, we pray for the various family celebrations and the ordinary times together that has, have been postponed because of the pandemic. We pray for all who mourn and have yet to experience the closure of a religious service. Today we pray particularly for Paul Devonport and his family on the death of Paul's wife, Nona. We also pray for Victor and Sean who have postponed their wedding plans. Likewise, in the face of the pandemic, we pray for all school administrators and teachers in universities and colleges, in public parochial and charter schools, now faced with difficult decisions and demanding plans to enact. We pray for all families that already are homeschooling children, and we pray for those growing up who will be quickened by new responsibilities as family works, work arrangements shift. We pray for wise practices among congregations coming together for worship and for congregations worshiping virtually. We ask a particular blessing on all pastors as they seek new ways of addressing the familiar and well-practiced ways of pastoring. Grant rest for their souls, companions for their journey, and abundant love to share. We pray for those who the society considers to be, quote, underdogs who are actually leading us into the future. 
We pray for all government workers. Bless each individual from the highest to the lowest in rank and grant that each will work for the welfare of all. Bless our state, our native populations, our region, our nation, our world, that we may learn to live as a community bound in respect and compassion with equity towards all. And finally, bless our individual homes and families that we may discover anew the joys of walking by faith, being led by Christ and sustained by the Holy Spirit. Now pray, hear us as we pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now to God be glory and honor forever. Let the people say, Amen. Bless the Lord, let the people say. The Lord's name be praised. And now, my friends, I know that you are about to be a blessing in this day to someone, perhaps to many someones, and that how you live will be an indication of your love for the Lord and your willingness to follow Jesus Christ. So until we pray together again, live peaceably with all.